count on. Now new tonight, media mogul Tyler Perry has answered the prayers of a grieving family. The superstar just offered to pay for a murder victim's funeral. Police say her boyfriend shot and killed her this weekend in the parking lot of an Alfreda bank. Channel 2's Michael Seiden is live in Alfreda. Michael, you spoke with Tyler Perry this evening. He's helping this woman's four children now. You know, Craig, at first I thought that this was a prank phone call. In fact, I almost hung up on Tyler Perry. Then seconds into the call, I realized it was really Tyler Perry. And he basically told me that he had seen our reports about the murder that unfolded in this parking lot of a bank. He said he felt horrible for this family. He wanted their number. And now this family says they got a phone call that they'll never forget. He is one of Hollywood's biggest stars. Actor director Tyler Perry is also known for his generosity, including back in December when the Atlanta residents surprised hundreds of Walmart customers, paying off more than $430,000 in bills. Now he's stepping up again. About 30 minutes, 30, 45 minutes ago, I received a phone call. This time, answering the prayers of Tanisha Evans' four grieving children. Police say her boyfriend shot and killed her over the weekend in the parking lot of this Wells Fargo bank in Alpharetta. So I answered, and the person on the other end of that phone was like, This is Tyler. I said, Who? <laughs> he says, This is Tyler. I said, Tyler, who? <laughs> he said, Tyler Perry. I said, Tyler Perry? And I broke down crying. During the phone call, Perry offered to fly their mother's body back to her home state of Wisconsin, where family and friends will hold her funeral. He's also promised to take care of tuition. I'm going to do what she wanted me to do. She started me on math, and so the fact that I'll be able to graduate from Spelman College with a mathematics degree without debt, it means everything. A family in pain, finding peace, thanks to an incredible act of kindness. It means that we're not alone. That we have support. You're an angel on earth, and thank you so much. I tell you what, just being around that family, you really got the chills. Now, this family was dealt another blow today when they found out they were going to be evicted from their apartment. Tyler Perry told me, though, he's going to take care of their rent. One more quick note, the family wanted me to tell everybody out there, thank you so much for your generous donations. In fact, at last check, their Go GoFundMe page has raised more than $36,000. Mm. We are live in Alpharetta, Michael Seiden, Channel 2 Action News, Nightbeat. That is just amazing. I know we were, you were thrilled, we were thrilled yeah. to hear the news that Tyler was stepping in, made that call, and was going to step in to help this family. And when we started reporting this story, people were talking about in the newsroom that maybe someone yeah. will step in to help them because it's such when a Tyler serious... When Tyler calls, need. people don't believe that it's Tyler Perry. <laughs> we're seeing this common thing, but the entire story just gave me chills. Now, as we've mentioned over the years, Tyler Perry has helped many people here in Metro Atlanta during some very tough times. I know. We tried to list them. There are so many. He bought this new van for a Henry County church last year. In 2012, he gave a minivan to two women after watching our stories. One woman got a specially equipped van so she could get around because of her disability. Another woman with multiple sclerosis also got a new car. In all of those cases, Perry was replacing vans that had been stolen wow. from yeah. those people. Um, I do remember another story. He bought camping gear for a Boy Scouts troop. Their trailer was stolen, mm -hmm. I think, from a church parking lot in DeKalb County. And there have been others. I mean, there There's are many, so many more. He helped a 100-year-old woman with her home as well a few years ago. Right. Simply put, Tyler something. Perry, you are amazing. That's right. Thank you That's so right. much. Atlanta <laughs> is so lucky to have you and still claims you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Good morning, my faithful lawyer, YouTube subscriber. Today is it is Tuesday. It is the 19th of March. It will be spring tomorrow, I believe. It's the year is 2019. And you just saw in that video, Tyler Perry gave a wonderful donation to a family that's in the. I did a video about um, Tynesha, uh Evan, I believe her last name, whose um, my mother was shot and killed at a bank. While going to meet her um, ex boyfriend, Tanisha Evans, was going to meet her boyfriend at a bank and he was going to help lead her there, leading her to believe that she he would be helping her to pay rent on their apartment that she was past due on. And he did not do so, in fact, for whatever reasons that we may never know, he shot and killed Ms. Evans.
Ms. Evans was the mother of four children, um, one in a, a college freshman at Spelman University. I did a video about it. I think a lot of people understood, misunderstood my intentions. I think it's very noble with Tyler Perry, and I'm very happy that he, he was able to intervene and help this family that's in need. You know, I'm 49 years of age. My mother's still alive. And I'm grateful to have had my mother in my life for the past 49 years. These children are left with no mother and they're in their 20s. They don't, their mother will never see them have children, go have marriages. Um, she didn't even get grandchildren as far as I know. Uh, she, at least they didn't say. These children, these children are left, her children are young and they're gonna need a hell of a lot of support to make it through this crisis. And my intentions were, I don't, you know, some people misunderstood my intentions because I talked about, um, made some assumptions about this young lady, Ms. Ms. Evans. My whole problem with the black community when it comes to single mothers is that they, it is a complicated life for women and children who don't have um, a family intact, meaning a father there. Somebody said I said something about sin. Well, I don't believe sin. S I E and sin that's in the Bible. I don't give a shit about no damn sin. And I don't give a fuck about no damn Bible. That fake ass shit. I'm thinking, what are these people already retarded? Common sense should tell you it's complicated for a black mother in the United States of America, this racist motherfucking fucked up ass country, to raise children alone with no man involved. That doesn't take a rocket science to figure that shit out. And all I'm saying is that black women have got to start looking, thinking about their future before they have children with these no good niggas who don't want these children, who are not going to be involved. If a black man, and I'll say this point again, and, there, and somebody sent a message saying that this woman was married at one point and she is a college graduate. I don't know how much truth is in that. It very well could be true. But at, all I'm just saying is that Black women have got to start making wiser decisions about the choices they have children with so that they can have a husband in their lives. And the family could grow and thrive and be more financially um, off, better off. Now, now, we all know every marriage ain't going to be great. And if they're going to be unsuccessful marriages, there will be divorces and all kinds of shit. Yeah, we know that for a fact. But when you got 70, 80 percent of black women walking around here, single raising and children alone, some of these women never even attempted to have a marriage. And I don't think that was I don't know if this is Miss Evans case or not, but I do understand that it's complicated. In the black community for anyone to raise children alone, whether you are a man or a woman. I'm 49 years of age. I can fathom sitting over here raising children by myself. It would just be very complicated. Well, something happened to me. What about my children? Now, some people, there were some comments that I didn't like that people made on that video um, yesterday that I made because they just, just misunderstood. And, then, and sometimes you, when you're dealing with niggas and black folks and ignorant black folks, let's just face it, they will never understand Whatever you're trying to explain to them. All they see is, you're talking about someone. You're judging somebody. You're this, you're that. Sit down and shut your fucking mouth. Ignorant niggas. A lot of these situations could be avoided. I look at my sisters and how they had ran out and had all these children. Now, I was only 16, 17, 15, 16, 17 years of age when they were having these kids. I'm thinking, what the fuck they going to do these kids? How they going to feed them, take care of them, house and clothing? Wow! Don't take a rocket science to figure that out. Had a conversation. I went to the Cab County Farmer's Market. And I picked up a duck. I'm going to grill a duck. I'm supposed to be putting that duck on the grill now, but I need to. I'm going to go to the gym. But I need to, I'm going to smoke a duck over here today. I love smoked duck. So I'm marinating it in the refrigerator now my special glaze. But I'm going to come back here and put that duck on it. It won't be done for a few hours. I should have did it this morning. It would have been done by now, but anyway. While at the DeCart, DeKalb County Farmer's Market purchasing some stuff, I bumped into one of my Facebook, one of my um, YouTube subscribers who watches my videos. And he proceeded to tell me the story of a woman who's 20, young lady who's 25 years of age and she has eight children. And the chaos and confusion that he has encountered while assisting with this, this woman, and he works for the, uh, the state or some organization that he has to help 
this, these particular women. She's 25 years of age with eight children, utter chaos and confusion. And like he said, there are no men nowhere to be found. Nowhere. Every household you go to, there's no, no fathers, no husbands, no uncles, nobody. Just a bunch of children. And it's starting to get to a point that it doesn't make sense to me for anyone to go out and have children by a man who has not wanted to commit to being with you and being in a relationship all the way to the end. I don't understand it. It's kind of odd. And, I don't, and I'm not judging anyone, nor am I saying this is the case with Ms. Evans here. But I just find it very odd. Um, maybe, maybe, her, maybe she still does have relationships with her children. When I mean, she started having children, she's 19 years old. Maybe she still does have a relationship with her children's father or fathers. I don't know. Um, I just find it kind of sad that she had to go to a, a boyfriend and ask him for financial assistance. And he decided to, to take her life. We know he's crazy. And he, I hope he gets life in prison. They should give the man an electric chair. She should, he should get the electric chair for what he did. But honestly, like I said, I'm grateful. Tyler Perry stepped in. He's offered to fly her, uh, her body back to us constant for a funeral and to assist the family with rent. And also, he's going to help pay for her. I mean, and I'm just grateful that Tyler Perry had the financial means to do so. He has done some very noble things in the community for people who are in a financial need. And I can understand, Tyler Perry, I need, I can use a little help. I, I need, I'm getting my teeth done. They came with $54,000. I know this is, may not seem like that, but I know you don't like me and everything, but if you could just help me out, well, I could, I could use a little $54,000, but maybe I need to set me up or go fund me a page and go begging folks for $54,000 so I can get these teeth removed and fixed and all this shit. Yeah, well, that's a, I, will, I'm, I didn't get way off track begging for $54,000 for a damn Cadillac to park in my damn mouth. That's when them teeth came to yesterday when I was at the dentist's office, but I'm, I'm getting off track. But it was a shocker, but I'm, I'm getting off track. But $54,000, I was way off track. And I, where am I? I woke up in a dentist's office. Like, where am I? Do you know your name, Mr. Hampton? The, who? Where? Where? Who? I, I, what, women, what, what happened? You fainted. Why? Why? Why did I faint? Where? Where you at? The, you at the Clear Choice Dental Implant Place? Well, we're back to Tyler Perry and his noble cause. Thank you, Tyler Perry, for reaching in to help this family because they should most definitely need it. Because I was, I was heartbroken. I think a lot of people think I'm trying to attack this woman. Y'all was heartbroken when I saw the story. I knew about the situation before it even made the news because a friend of mine lives in Alfred and called and told me what was going on, and I was like, wow. And he lives right near there. And he said, well, somebody's been shot and killed up here. It was a young woman and blah, blah, blah. And, they, and I was, he was just telling me everything. And I was like, wow. And then sure enough, later on that afternoon, it came on the news. So I had heard about it. And um, I, was, I was shocked and saddened by the whole story. I felt sorry for this young woman who lost her life with this crazy nigga she was dealing with. And I felt sorry that these children are now running around without the most important person in life, their mother. Because I'm sure she loved her kids, and I'm sure they loved her. And now they got to find a way to survive without their mother. And I don't even think they, I would hope, I pray and hope that their father, our fathers, are involved in their lives. I just hope that they're, they, that some man is in, involved in their lives. I hope they have a father that's there for them. I just hope. Because they, I, I, don't, I mean, I don't have children. I never really wanted children because I don't like the events that I see. I didn't like the things that I saw taking place in my own personal life with my, my brothers and sisters and cousins and uncles and aunts and the kids. It was just too much chaos and confusion. And I said, I don't want to be, I don't want that for my life. Because having children means I'm going to have to take care of these kids for pretty much the rest of my life. Cause these are my kids. My mother's been actively involved in my life and I'm damn near 50. And I speak to her and see her every day. I'm trying to do lunch order today, but she's too busy running around. Yeah, you know, my mother, she'd be on them rescue. You know, she'd be running around on the save, a, save a nigga mission. She, she'd be running around. I said, Mom, you need to sit down someplace and quit trying to worry about these niggas because you can't save all of them. She just, she, she on a mission. I'd say, well, it keeps her busy.
Very time consuming. Is not. A, I don't see that shit. I don't have the patience to do all these crazy niggas in Atlanta. My mother be dealing with homeless people, and then my nieces and nephews, and all kinds of people running this person here, running this person here, doctors. But it's just ridiculous. I'm like, Mama, you you know, you gotta chill and relax. You're up there in age, so it's nice to be out there volunteering and helping to try to do what you can to help the community. But it frightens me sometimes because she's dealing with complete strangers that she doesn't even know, and putting them in her car and running around. I'm just like, who are who are you with, and where are you? It does scare me. You know, but she said she got the blood of Jesus and God's going to protect her and blah, 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 blah. So I just said, okay, all right, whatever. But Tyler Perry, I'm grateful that you did step in and help this family. I made a donation to the family's um, GoFundMe account, but, you know, I don't have billions of dollars or millions of dollars. I hope Tyler Perry can hop in and step in there and also them, that family, they're going to need a place to live. I mean... I thank you for paying the rent, but I hope you can find him a, an affordable home that maybe he can jump in and help pay for them so they can have housing, so they can stay together. Because otherwise, the family unit's going to be broken up because the mother's not there and there's nobody. It's just a lot of confusion here. And again, I'm on the outside. I don't know. Maybe they have uncles and aunts and people who can step in and help. I really wish that she had went to some family members to, instead of going to this jack-legged, ignorant-ass nigga who shot and killed her. I mean, I just, I don't understand if you didn't love, if you, if, if you didn't want to give her the money and you felt like, like, I don't know what was going on in his head, it's never, ever into my mind to harm anyone. But I've been harmed by people, people that I helped. So it's just sad to me that the mentality of niggas is crazy it's insane. So I keep them niggas out. I can't, I can't deal with them. I can't, I can't deal with you fucking niggas. I can't deal with it. It's quiet over here because ain't nobody here. Nobody. It's me. And I don't like it that way. I'm going to take me a shower and carry my black ass to the gym. And figure out I'm going to round up this $54,000 to get these teeth implants I need. It's shit high as hell. I've thought about going down to Mexico. The problem I'm having is because of this injury on my face. And it's creating some problems that we have to deal with. And this shit is expensive. And if I'm ever going to want to have peace... In my mouth, in my face, in the pain, and the suffering. This is the only route that I've found that seems logical. So we'll see. It's exhausting sometimes. But that's a minor issue for me. Teeth. I can honestly get some cheap dentures and parcels and throw that shit in and eat like a damn brown animal. I don't have a situation. I'm not dealing with a death over here. My mom has been shot and killed by some nigger who lured her to a bank in the hopes of giving my, my mother the money she can come here. Matter of fact, I just zeroed out my mother's credit cards and zeroed them all out so she can go back out there and run them back up again. Good Lord, trying to help these poor ass niggas. That seems to be what's her mission, so. But I was, I'm, I'm grateful for what Tyler Perry did. I've had my issues with Tyler Perry over the years. And I think sometimes people misunderstand me, or even with that. Mm. I'm grateful that he was step in, step in and help his family. He's done a lot of noble things over the years to help people. He's got the money. You can't take it with you. So you, I mean, I'm really great and glad because he could be stingy. And like I said, he ain't got to do nothing with no help. Nobody is his money. Yeah, he is his money. He can do whatever he want to do. But I am glad that he is giving back to the community when he sees stuff like this happening. It made me, last time I was sitting down with my little block and cranberry, and I saw that and I said, oh. Because this had been on my heart and soul about these children. I was like, oh my God, these children are going to They lost their mother, and it's just such a horrible thing. And it just it just happens so frequently, frequently in the black community that it frightens me. Yeah, I'm 49. I'm 6'2". I weigh 260 pounds. But I've learned to be very careful in our community. When I pull up here at nighttime, I make sure I look around and keep, keep, keep a close eye on my surroundings. I try not to go to places that late at night. I don't go through certain neighborhoods. I stay away from certain people. I don't want all this violence and crazy people around me because people will kill you for no reason. They don't give a damn about your life and nobody else's life. And that mother, and I thought about what if she had to took her daughter with her to go to the bank to meet this man? Would he have shot and killed her too? It's troubling and said 
You have to be careful out here. You can't trust people anymore. People are ruthless. They're vicious. And they don't care about your life or their own life. She would have been better off going to an agency asking for some type of help to pay that rent. Or someone, a family member, a friend, or somebody, some other way. They're going to meet this deadly nigga. Who she thought she probably could control. Or she probably was she probably didn't even know this man was plotting and planning this. I would hope not. He was just a crazy old man. A foolish old man. I don't think you put him in prison for the rest of his life. I wish I could give him the electric chair. Just to crank up that electric chair and throw his ignorant ass in there. It made me mad. You know, I went to this nightclub a night ago and these niggas was out there fighting like wild dogs and he was fights all over the damn place. There was so much chaos I confused. I'm done with that shit. I, I'm not going back around these niggas. I'm done. I can't do it. It doesn't make sense. We can't even go out on a Sunday night and have a drink and enjoy each other's company without all this chaos and confusion and niggas laid out on the street with blood all over them. I'm like, I don't want to live my life like this. That's why I tell people, that is not what you all think it is. It is not a black mecca for a lot of people. For a lot of us, it's just a regular, everyday nigga-filled city with dangerous daily niggas who will kill you over nothing. So I tell people, go someplace else. Look elsewhere, especially if you have children and you want a normal life. You don't have to come around here to this bullshit, these badass schools, these horrible educated, these ignorant ass niggas. Go someplace else. Find someplace better than this. And there are places that are better than this. I don't have children. And then I first they say, why don't, why don't you move? And I've been here for 30 damn years. I know where to go to and where not to go to and who to avoid. And, if I know, if I, and every day you learn something new, like now I know to avoid Tinted P Mount when them drunk punks are in there. On a Sunday afternoon, I'm not going back there. I don't be bothering me, the niggas. You know, I've had some friends approach me about doing some things in the community, possibly open up a bar, 